Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we're gonna be talking about our program, Scripto LLC GPI AI program that we wrote ourselves. We're talking about G minor, all the nuances of G minor, all the little things that we notice where a card will drop some hash rate and then pick it up later. So if you think that's interesting, hit like, subscribe, hit the bell. Go to CryptoLLC.org if you're looking for someone to manage a GPU on a basic mining farm and check out our other social media accounts. All right, so let's get started. So here's G Miner. We are running the uh, 2.74 version, which is the newest version as of today, January 8th. And <clears throat> I'm recording this off of my computer here, off the screen, just looking at the desktop. Um, so first thing I want to talk about is the nuances of the GPU just dropping off some hash rate. It's usually one GPU, and then it picks up as time goes on. And the way we combat that with our program, where our program will sense that something's wrong and then do a display restart or display driver restart. So let me show you an example here. So here's a GPU right here. These are, this is a 3080 rig. Um, a lot of these are EVGA 4013s as well as some PN, no, not, no, there is no PNY, I think that, not this rig. Um, there's a 3090 here. That 3090 is uh, stock NVIDIA 3090. Um, so you can see it right here, it's running at 124. The rest of them are running at LHR speeds, which currently is about 73, 74. And then here's one that's non-LHR, 101, and so on. Here's one that's uh, a little bit warmer than the rest of them, 3080. So our program, what it does is it uh, checks <clears throat> the current speed of each GPU and, and uh, either increases the power ratio or decreases the power ratio. So you can see the power ratio right now for these LHR cards is 73. That's for all LHR and non-LHR cards for 3080s, which the maximum power that is required is 73. It's just a coincidence that that's actually the speed is at 73, 74. For non-LHR, uh, the power ratio is about 65. We did our tests and you can run it at 70, but you can actually run it at 65 and get around the same speed, about around 100, 101. You can see our memory overclock here is at 10601, which is an overclock of 100 uh, of uh, 1100 in G minor. Um, and uh, so our anyway, our program, what it does is it checks all the GPUs and tries to set the power ratio for them. So it checks that the temperature is not over 104. And if the temperature is less than 104 and the speed is less than the required speed and the power ratio is less than the required power ratio. So in this situation here with the LHR cars, the maximum power ratio is 73. And so after it does all those checks, a bunch of if, you know, if else, all that stuff. Once it does all those checks, then it either increases the power or decreases the power. Now, why we do that is because we don't want the VRAM to overheat. So you can see all our VRAMs are in good standing here. Uh, it's winter time actually, January, so obviously. But if the temperature was to increase uh, in the warehouse, then these would actually go up to like 102, 104. And as soon as it hits 104, then the application will then automatically detect that a VRAM is at 104 and then down clock uh, the power or turn down the power. So you can see the power here is at 73, but then the power become like 71 and then 69 and then uh, 67 and so on. So it decreases by two or it increases by two. So same way or same thing the other way is uh, if it was it to increase, um, then it'll increase by two as well. So that's how that works. Um, <clears throat> same thing for the 3090 here. Let's see the 3090 is running at 95 power. That's the maximum power is required. You don't need 100 power for a 3090. And you can see the speed here is 124. So this program, what it does every 10 minutes, it checks for all the VRAMs, uh, does that whole check. It either increases or decreases everything by two points. Um, then it also restarts the display driver. So, like I said earlier, if a card is running way too slow, so if a card is running like at 50, so you can see these LHRs are running, like this one right here, here's a good example. This one is running at 34. Um, and it's not supposed to run at 34. You can see the temperature here is 66, it's very cold. Um, and it's a lot colder than these other ones, but that's because the VRAM is not being used to the maximum. Uh, it's running slow and, and that's just something that happens in G minor. So what our program does is it will detect that. If I press this set GPU power button here, <clears throat> it's going to check all the cards. Here's checking it all, no power change. So basically our program decided that there is no increase or decrease of power required because everything is at max power. Uh, you can see them all at 73 and the max power for 3090 is 95. So everything's at max power. But it did detect that this card right here is running slow. 
see that that is GPU number eight. So if I go to my messages here, click on message, I scroll down, you can see right here, it was detected that GPU eight, uh, right there, GPU eight is running slow at 636. That's, that's when I recorded this video actually, it's uh, 636 PM. So it detected that it was slow and it logged that in to the messages and now it's gonna check that again in an hour. So every single hour, it will check to see if that speed increased from 33 back to what the normal speed is, which is 73 or 74. Or basically it's checking if it's more than 50 because that's the minimum value. If it's not more than 50, then the program will then restart the display driver. And so what will that do is, uh, what that does is it'll close down G minor right here. It's running here. It'll close down that G minor. And then after it closes it down, um, it actually tried closing the CMD for it and then closing the G minor the EXE for, for uh, cause it, you know, sometimes it runs on one or the other. So it'll close that, make sure that that's closed. Then it will restart the display driver. It takes some time, like 30 seconds. It'll wait 30 seconds after the restart and then it will, re the program will restart itself. So this program right here will then reboot itself. And after it reboots itself, it'll refresh the Brave browser, which is what we use. And then the, the hash rate should go back to normal, which is 73, 74. Then it also logs that into the messages. So I can go back to messages and see that there, how many times it restarted. So I can see that right here, it restarted at 1-6-2022, which was two days ago. So two days ago, the program actually restarted display driver. So the program turned off the G minor, turned off everything and restarted display driver to bring it back up to the maximum speed. Then it detected a GPU a slowdown on GPU position or GPU ID 11. It detected a slowdown, but you see that it never actually restarted. And the reason why it never restarted is because it detected a slowdown on GPU ID 11. But after some time, that means in, in less than an hour, that GPU fixed itself. So it went back up to the required speed, which is at least 50. So after it went back up to 50, then that uh, the program did not do anything about it, just left it alone. Then the next time it detected another slowdown GPU is when I just pressed the button a couple minutes ago. That was detected on GPU 8, which is the one right here. So now it's going to check again in an hour. And if GPU number 8 is still slow, it does that restart. So this is how we built the program to automatically manage not only the VRAM temperatures, but also manage the restarts and display restarts to make sure that all the GPUs are running at maximum speed. Now this problem of uh, some of the GPUs like this one running at 33, or even this one running at 60, 63, it might, it might just go back up to 74, you know, in like five minutes. But this one for sure, this one has a problem. And uh, we, this only happens on LHR cards. So we had to figure out a way to solve the problem. We solved it with having a display restart. So this is either a uh, G minor uh, problem with LHR cards, or maybe it's a Windows 11 problem, or, or maybe it's an NVIDIA driver problem. So who knows what the problem is, but that's how we solved it. So next thing I wanna talk about is uh, some of the other features we have for this program. The reason why I'm talking about this program is because I wanted to show any potential uh, clients out there that are interested in having us manage everything for them that you're not only just getting a rig that runs you know, 24 seven with a high uptime and all that, you're also getting a rig that is auto managing the VRAM temperatures, which increases the lifespan of the cards, which then uh, increases uh, the chance that the card will run forever, which is what you want. You don't wanna run cards for a year and then have them die. So you want them to run forever. And this is the way you do it by limiting the VRAM and also the core. So the program also will not allow the core to, or, or GMINE won't allow the core to overheat. So make sure everything's in spec. So anyway, back to some of these other settings we have here. So this is a power setting. This setting allows us to lock the power to not allow the G, not allow our program, Crypto LLC GPU AI, to actually um, turn on or turn turn up or turn down the power ratio on the GPUs. Um, the other one it just marks that it's an LHR rig or non LHR rig. So if we have a rig that's non LHR, we just keep that off, and that that plays a role on the maximum power that we're gonna give each GPU. So that means that if we get a rig full of non-LHR cards, then we wanna mark that because we want the power ratio to be at 65 rather than 73. Um, let's see, the other thing we have here is our power setting here. So this is a manual power setting. So I can hit this 
80, 85, 90, 95, 100 and all that. This is sets the power for all the cards. So if I wanna overwrite these settings, I can set them here and have this overwrite them. So I can set them all to 73, 75, 80 and all that stuff. So this is just a shortcut if I wanna set them all to like a higher number and then down clock them as the temperature goes up on them, then that's something I can do. Um, so down here we have our time. So this program checks uh, all these you know, speeds and VRAM temperatures and, and all that stuff. It checks every, it checks it every single 10 minutes. And this gives you a timer of what time I'm in that, you know, inside of that 10 minutes. So right now it's uh, two minutes and 30 seconds. So in seven minutes and 30 seconds, this miner will check again all the VRAM temperatures, check everything and then uh, establish what it, what it needs to do. Uh, another thing is we have an automatic uh, G minor update button here. So if G minor ever releases another version, which obviously it will, you know, we're running version 2.74 right there at the top, you can see 2.74. So if G minor uh, releases a new version, we create a zip file of it, we upload it to a server, and then by pressing this button, it automatically update G minor. Um, so that's uh, very useful where I don't have to go into every single rig and update the G minor manually. I can just up, update it uh, by, uh, well, actually, this is the manual operation here. I can update it manually like this, but then also this program checks every hour for a G minor update, depending on a switch that I, you know, toggle the switch or not on, an, on, another, on another server. So that'll update G minor. Then this updates the program itself, which is this one, Crypto AI. So we are running version uh, 0108, which is uh, usually marked by the date that the program was built on. So today is in January 8th. So this is the newer version that I just built today. So if I wanna update it manually, I click on update program, or again, it checks every hour for a program that I mean, it checks every hour if the program has an update and then updates it. Uh, next thing is again, if I wanna <clears throat> force a restart display driver, I don't wanna wait for this thing to you know go through a whole hour and then to do this whole process where it checks this an hour later, I can actually force it to restart by clicking the restart display uh, button right here and then I'll force the whole thing to restart. So if I don't wanna wait, I press that. Then again, this show messages, we just talked about this. This shows me when uh, when I detected slow GPU. See, a lot of times I was detecting GPU six and then it detected GPU seven one time and then it detected, detected GPU eight and 11. So if I ever wanted to go back in history and take a look at what it was detecting in previous you know, 20 iterations or 20 um, uh, safe positions, basically, we're saving 20, what's it called, um, logs. Uh, I can go in here, take a look at those logs and see, you know, why is GPU six having these problems? Then I can go over here and try to, you know, kind of like check out why it's uh, doing that as well as I can turn off GPU six and find it physically on the rig and then take a look at uh, why it's uh, running so slow, try to fix it. But you can see right now it's running fine. It's running at 70, it's just having a little warm VRAM temps, you see. That's why my program's not upgrading it to uh, <clears throat> anything past 70, just to keep it under the VRAM. Uh, next one is restart program. So this just allows me to restart the program. If uh, I'm thinking that maybe the program is acting weird or I wanted to reset the settings in it or, or I wanted to clear something, I, I can go to restart program. And the next one is clear log. So instead of going to the actual log file of G minor and then selecting everything and clearing everything, I created a little button here that I just click on that and it automatically goes into the log and then deletes everything from it. I don't want to delete the file itself. I just want to clear all the messages in there. So that way I don't, I don't have like old messages from like three days ago. Uh, if I want to clear that, I clear it all by pressing this button. So that's how our program works. Um, <clears throat> Um, a couple of other things, like it's showing me accepted shares, rejected, stale shares, and invalid shares. This is all just taken from G minor, which is right over here. So here's your accepted, stale, rejected, all that stuff. Um, and then there's other couple of things, like connection errors, if it had a problem connecting with the JSON file, the API for G minor. Um, it'll tell me that it has connection issues, or uh, there's another one right here, which is setting how many GPUs are on the rig. So this GPU has, this uh, rig has 14 GPUs on it. So I don't need to change that. That's the max amount we have of B250, but some boards only allow 12 GPUs. So we have this setting here that allows us to change it and uh, so on, so on, so on. It's a little couple of other little details, which I'm not going to mention really in this video. So that's how our program works. That's how we manage all the VRAM temperatures. 
Um, why this is important again is because we want to make sure that the VRAM is running at the coldest possible temperature and uh, also running at the fastest speed. We do not want to go into thermal throttling at 110 Celsius. We want to keep everything below 104 to make sure we're all in the safe zone for the VRAM temperatures. And you can see all these ones are in the safe zone. They're all running really nicely. The only one that's number six, and that's just a GPU that has not a well-built VRAM heatsink, and that's why it's having those issues. Not that it's our program doing something, it's just that the, that GPU card is just not the best, I would say. Still runs good, running at 70, not 73, 74. So, yep, I just want to show you guys, give you an update. Uh, we've been working on this program for these past months, refining it. Um, oh, by the way, I forgot to say that we also have a Telegram notification system in this program where if the, if the program detects that there's a GPU loss, it sends us a Telegram notification. If the program detects that JSON file can't be read, it sends us a Telegram notification. Also, if the program detects that uh, the GPU is slow or something's wrong or it can't connect or it's not mining or whatever, it'll send us those Telegram notifications. So that way we know that this rig right here um, is having problems and we log into it and we try to uh, we try to work on and fix up whatever you know whatever the problem is a slow gpu or whatever it is so it's very important because again if you're running lots and lots of rigs you're running like 50 rigs or 100 rigs or whatever you're running you got to have something that's automated that will automatically send you any notifications for potential problems so you can look into it and fix it before it causes anything significant all right, well, that's going to be it for this video. hope you guys like it. You know what to do. Hit like, subscribe, hit the bell. And if you're looking for someone to manage a GPU farm for you, if you're looking for someone to set something up exactly like this, this is what we run for all of our clients. We run our program. We run Gminer. We mine whatever coins are most profitable. For today, it's going to be Ethereum. It could be Ravencoin. It could be uh, AutoCycle or whatever that one's called. Um, it could be any of those coins. But we convert everything to Bitcoin for you, automatically converted using pooling. You can see our pool right there where we're using pooling. So... If you're looking for someone to manage this for you, go to CryptoLLC.org, send us an email. We have different investment packages, different uh, things that you could uh, you can inv like invest in or purchase or, or whatever that suits you. Go to CryptoLLC.org, send us an email. And that's going to be it for this video. Hope you guys like it. Until next time, goodbye.